The waste management market in North America hit $208 billion in 2019. By 2027, it's set to grow to $229 billion. This growth isn't slowing down anytime soon, especially with tighter environmental rules on the horizon. Leading this front in trash production is the United States, the world's biggest producer of waste. In this crowded space, companies like Waste Management Incorporated and Republic Services are at the forefront, dominating the industry with their vast networks and innovative solutions. Waste is not just waste, it's also seen as a resource in this evolving landscape. To understand better how waste management is treated today, we need to understand how landfills work in the United States. Before the 1930s, landfills were like giant holes where people threw all their garbage. It was messy and not good for the environment. Trash just piled up and there were no systems to keep harmful stuff from seeping into the ground, air, and water system. It was a big problem because it could make the soil dirty and the air smelly. Today, modern landfills have significantly improved. When trash is deposited, it will be compacted and covered with layers, utilizing special liners, pipes, and gas collection systems underneath to prevent harmful substances from contaminating the soil and groundwater. One of the key benefits of these gas collection systems is collecting methane, a potent greenhouse gas released during trash decomposition. Instead of letting methane harm the environment and contribute to pollution, modern landfills convert these gases into energy. Additionally, today's landfills are regulated under specific laws like RCRA Subtitle D for solid waste and Subtitle C for hazardous waste, along with the Toxic Substances Control Act or TSEA. These regulations aim to protect human health and the environment from potential hazards caused by waste disposal. They also focus on conserving energy, natural resources, and reducing waste generation. Furthermore, modern landfills focus on reducing waste by recycling and composting. This helps decrease the amount of waste going into landfills, making them have a longer, useful life and causing less harm to the environment. New technologies like landfill mining and turning waste into energy also help make waste management more sustainable. One example of a landfill in the U.S. is the Newton County Landfill in Georgia, operated by the Newton County Solid Waste Management Authority, or SWMA. It's designed for Newton County residents with a $30 minimum charge per vehicle per visit covering the first 1,080 pounds of waste. Additional weight incurs a tipping fee of $56 per ton. All waste is accurately weighed for reporting to the EPD. The landfill spans about 217 acres, with 88.1 acres permitted for disposal. In the waste management industry, waste management and Republic Services stand out as prominent players. Waste Management, founded in 1968, and Republic Services, tracing its origins back to the early 1980s, have both experienced substantial growth over the years. As of April 1, 2019, Waste management stock price was $102.20, while Republic Services was $79.76 on the same day. Fast forward to March 25, 2024, and we see significant progress. Waste management stock price has risen to $211.78 and Republic Services to $190.51. While waste management is the larger of the two in terms of size and operations, Republic Services has also expanded significantly. Waste management operates extensively across the United States, managing a vast network of landfills and waste-to-energy facilities to ensure efficient waste disposal and environmental compliance. The company's network includes 337 transfer stations, 254 active landfill disposal sites, 97 recycling plants, 135 beneficial use landfill gas projects, and 6 independent power plants. Currently, waste management has a market cap of $85.31 billion. On the other hand, Republic Services has a widespread presence, operating in numerous locations across 40 states and Puerto Rico. They offer waste collection, recycling, and disposal services through 343 collection operations, 
and 204 transfer stations and 206 active landfills. Additionally, Republic Services manages 71 recycling centers, 7 treatment and recovery facilities, and 11 saltwater disposal wells. This extensive network allows Republic Services to provide comprehensive waste management solutions to residential, commercial, and industrial clients. Currently, Republic Services has a market cap of $59.5 billion. Both companies play vital roles in waste management, contributing to environmental sustainability and efficient waste disposal practices. They are instrumental in handling waste responsibly and implementing innovative solutions to meet the increasing demands for sustainable waste management. Waste management with its extensive network and advanced waste-to-energy technologies focuses on minimizing waste sent to landfills and maximizing resource recovery through recycling and composting initiatives. Republic Services, known for its comprehensive waste management services across diverse sectors, emphasizes sustainable practices and efficient waste collection, recycling, and disposal methods. Together, these companies lead the industry in promoting environmental responsibility and addressing the challenges of waste management in the modern era. In terms of revenue generation, waste management companies employ various strategies. One key aspect is their waste collection services, where they charge fees for picking up and disposing of waste from residential areas, commercial establishments, and industrial sites. These fees vary based on factors such as the volume or type of waste generated, ensuring that the company covers its operational costs while maintaining a profitable margin. For instance, residential customers may pay around $20 to $30 per month for basic waste collection services, while businesses and industries could incur higher fees based on the amount and the nature of waste produced. In addition to waste collection services, Recycling operations play a crucial role in generating revenue for waste management companies. These operations involve advanced technologies that sort and process recyclable materials like metals, plastics, glass, and paper from the waste stream. Once sorted, these materials are sold to recycling facilities and manufacturers for the production of new products. For example, Republic Services Recycling Centers, contributing approximately 3% of the company's total revenue in 2022. These centers primarily focus on processing fiber-based materials such as old corrugated containers, old newsprint, and mixed paper, which amount to 81% of the recycling processing center volume. In 2022 alone, they processed and sold 2 million tons of recyclable materials while an additional 2 million tons were collected and delivered to third parties. This emphasis on recycling not only contributes significantly to the company's financial stability, but also promotes sustainable practices by reducing the volume of waste sent to landfills. Another revenue generator for these companies are waste-to-energy processes facilities. When trash is collected and fed into a chute for combustion, known as waste to energy or energy recovery, it is used to generate electricity or heat. Waste management companies convert non-recyclable waste into energy at waste to energy facilities, which can then be sold to consumers. For instance, there is a waste to energy facility in Minnesota that uses the heat to warm the whole Minnesota Twins baseball field. They run the heat underneath the grass to keep it alive during winter. Pretty impressive, right? Government contracts also contribute significantly to their revenue stream. Waste management companies secure contracts with local, state, or federal governments to provide waste disposal and recycling services, ensuring compliance with environmental regulations while generating stable income. An illustration of this is Covanta Energy Corp's contract with Modesto City and Stanislaus County in California, extending until June 30, 2027. This 15-year agreement involves the city and county providing 243,300 tons of waste each year to Covanta's Stanislaus plant at a market-based rate, thereby augmenting the company's revenue stream. Now in the United States, waste management companies need to adhere to sustainability regulations which they must follow to protect the environment. 
These rules cover how waste is handled, recycled, and disposed of to reduce harm to nature. The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, is a big part of making sure these rules are followed. They set standards and guidelines that waste companies like Waste Management and Republic Services must meet. This includes limits on harmful gases released from landfills and requirements for safe disposal of hazardous waste. Speaking of waste generation, the United States produces a significant amount of waste per person compared to many other countries. Factors such as high consumption levels, extensive packaging, and a culture of disposability contribute to this trend. On average, each person in the U.S. generates about 4.9 pounds of waste per day, totaling approximately 1,787 pounds of waste per year. This rate is notably higher than in Europe and Japan, where waste generation is about half of that. Globally, the U.S. waste generation rate is also significantly higher than the average of about 2.6 pounds per person per day. To address this issue, the U.S. has been implementing waste management strategies focused on reducing, reusing, and recycling. Efforts include promoting recycling programs, encouraging sustainable practices, and investing in waste-to-energy conversion technologies. Initiatives also aim to reduce single-use plastics and promote a circular economy, minimizing waste through reuse and recycling. However, waste management remains a complex challenge requiring ongoing innovation and collaboration across sectors to achieve significant reductions in waste generation and environmental impact. When comparing the energy efficiency of waste management methods, Landfills are generally less efficient than burning facilities or recycling processes. Landfills require ongoing maintenance, monitoring, and gas management to mitigate environmental risks and ensure long-term sustainability. This underscores the importance of transitioning to more efficient waste management practices to reduce environmental impact and promote a greener future. In contrast, burning facilities, also known as waste-to-energy plants, use advanced technologies to convert waste into energy through incineration, generating electricity or heat in the process. While this method has its own environmental considerations, such as air emissions and ash disposal, it can contribute to reducing reliance on fossil fuels and landfills for waste disposal. The EPA's initiatives encompass research and development funding, waste management guidelines, educational campaigns, and collaboration with industry stakeholders to address emerging challenges and opportunities in waste management. By embracing these future-focused strategies, the U.S. aims to become a more efficient and environmentally conscious leader in waste management on a global scale. Looking forward, waste management in the U.S. is getting shaped in the right path with increasingly strict environmental regulations and a steadfast commitment to sustainability, we are finding smarter ways to manage waste. Companies are actively innovating, leveraging new technologies such as landfill mining, waste-to-energy processes, and enhanced recycling methods. Despite challenges, including the need for greater recycling infrastructure and managing the growing volume of waste, the industry remains dedicated to enhancing sustainability efforts. Even though you might just see the trash collector passing by your house as something normal, the waste management industry behind this is massive. By 2027, the waste management market in North America is expected to hit $229 billion, highlighting the critical need for efficient waste management. Leading companies like Waste Management Incorporated and Republic Services are at the forefront, each playing a significant role in improving waste management practices. And just to give you an idea of their financial weight, Waste Management Incorporated's market capitalization is around $85.31 billion, which is larger than Dell Technologies Incorporated with a market cap of $81.68 billion. On the other hand, Republic Services comes in at $59.5 billion, which is comparable to PNC Financial Services Group Incorporated at $61.69 billion. These figures help illustrate the significant financial scale of these industry leaders. So while managing waste may not be everyone's favorite task, 
Waste management companies will continue to be key players in the U.S. economy and lead the industry as they recognize that waste is not just a waste, but also a resource.